I met my husband, Jason, at Georgia State University. Even though we were going to the same church at the time, I actually met him at school. Um, we dated for five or six years, and we ended up getting married in 2000. And, you know, it was just us. Uh, starting off as newlyweds in our apartment complex. We, you know, went um, several years without kids, so it was just us. He would um, do gigs and teach at the same time, and me just getting into teaching and, you know, moving towards that career. We had Jody first, and then we had Joni. They were 18 months apart. Um, and it wasn't until probably Jody was about two, two and a half, where we figured out that she probably was autistic. And then once she's diagnosed and we are starting to see some of the changes with Joni and we're like, oh no, we might have two that are on the spectrum. And sure enough, Joni was diagnosed with autism as well. You know, one was crazy, but I think when we had Joni's diagnosis and we were just like, holy cow, like really, like, we even kind of questioned God a little bit, like, wait a minute, you know, you gave us one, and we were like, okay, you know. With the second one, we were just really kind of knocked down, you know. Um, we were just like, wait a minute, why is this happening to us? What is going on? In 2017, you know, just a regular Sunday, um, we had gotten out with the girls. We'd had um, kind of like our movie time with the girls. Um, and I was just talking to him, and like I said, we were just having a normal conversation about what we're doing the rest of the day, the kids. And I just go to make a phone call. I come back, call his name, and nothing. I look around, and I didn't see him at first, and then I look again, and he slumped over the table. And I just knew, like, I, I, I just knew that he was gone, and, um, they just told me that they was going to take him to the hospital, and I just needed to get there as soon as I could. But I, I, I knew he was gone. We were already struggling together with the girls, but I felt like we had kind of gotten to a level of peace with God, and I felt like things were working out, and God was, you know, really starting to move in our lives, and then all of a sudden he takes Jason away, and I'm just like, are you kidding me? You give me two special needs daughters. Now you take my only help, my best friend. And I just lost it for a while. And just really, really kind of just gave up in a way. It's like, there's just no way there's a God. You know, it's just, it's just too much. Like, I just, I just can't do this. I still miss him. I still think about him every day. For me, Westridge has just been such a blessing because it has given me people that have really not only given me, like, say that they'll help me or say that they love me, but they have just shown with their actions, with their love for my girls, with their love for me. Just so much support and love that I get from um, so many people at Westridge, and I'm just truly, truly grateful. You know, thinking back, even at those lowest points, I can always think of, you know what, God did that. He was, he was helping me. He was holding me up. Then he was, you know, always there once I look back. As you're going through it, you don't see it that way. You just see like, why is God leaving me? Why is, um, you know, why am I going through this? But looking back, I can see that he didn't leave me. He was planning all along to make things better for me. I just didn't see it. You know, my husband took care of so many things around the house that I had no clue um, how to take care of. Um, and so now I have this, this huge mess because of that. So it has just been virtually impossible to just kind of take care of everything. You know, I just feel like something is always lacking. Like either I'm lacking as a teacher, I'm lacking as a mom, lacking as, um, you know, homeowner. I just feel like something is always lacking because I don't have enough time, energy, money, you know, just, I just don't have enough to give to everything. When we first heard about this story, we knew that we had to step in and do something for the Passmore family. 
This is where the church steps up and just does what the Bible commands us to do. We become the church. This is where James chapter one talks about real religion, taking care of not only widows, but orphans. So here we are today, Westridge Church. We have done a total home makeover on the Passmore House. So many of you, men and women of our church, have stepped up. You have done laundry, you have replaced flooring, you have done plumbing, you've done electrical work, you have replaced things that needed to be replaced. Right now, Joycelyn Passmore and her girls are on their way here to see their newly renovated house. Westridge Church, I'm so proud of you. said that they were going to come alongside you and help you after Jason died and we meant it. Yes, you did. We came in here and we wanted to show you that God had, has not forgotten about you and you have heroically taken care of these girls these last several years by yourself and I'm sure there are many times where you felt like you were just totally abandoned by God and by friends and family. Here Mommy. are the keys to your house. Oh my gosh. 